Hello everyone, welcome to command line basics for our users. Now, before we proceed to the agenda of this course, let me show you a few places where we can connect. Uh, you can find all the details of our courses, uh, our R packages, Shiny apps, and blog and tutorials on our main website. Uh, we have a separate website for our uh, online R courses. So you can enroll and explore all our courses on that website. And uh, we also have separate uh, websites for our R packages and Shiny web apps. So we have about eight packages on CRAN and we have about seven uh, Shiny apps deployed on the cloud. So you can use them to interactively explore data also maintain a blog uh, where we post uh, once in a month uh, we post extremely long tutorials so you can also subscribe to our blog and go through those tutorials uh, all our course contents all our blogs our packages and shiny apps are available on github so you can explore our github repositories as well and we also post video tutorials on youtube so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel uh, to uh, stay updated about our video tutorials. And you can also connect with us on social media using Twitter, Facebook and LinkedIn. Right, so now let's move on and begin to learn. Now in the learning management system, you will find all the videos, uh, the slides that we are using in this course, uh, the code. Uh, which in this case are the shell commands, that's the file with the shell commands and the data, uh, which would basically be the files and folders that we'll use in this course, as well as suggested readings. Now, if you need any help, uh, you can always use the discussion forum, right? You can uh, post your questions and suggestions there. You can also mail us at support at R squared Academy and we'll try to reply within 48 to 72 hours. If you are having any issue uh, accessing the course content that is in the learning management system, then you can also raise a ticket and we'll address it at the earliest. Now let us look at the course resources. Uh, if you're not using the learning management system, that is, if you have not enrolled for the course, you can still access all the course resources uh, outside of the learning management system. So the slides and the code and data, uh, they are available in GitHub, right? So we have uh, mentioned those links wherever appropriate, right? So here you can find the slide, slides and code and data in this particular repository, which is uh, online courses, right? can go to this folder here and then you'll find all the resources related to this course right and we have also created a R studio project right on R studio cloud uh, so you can also access that uh, we have specified the link again in the learning management system as well as in uh, other places I'll also show you that here right so here is the uh, R Studio Cloud project, right? And all the files and folders that we'll be using in the course are also available here. Right, so we uploaded them. So all you need to do is uh, sign up uh, for R Studio Cloud, it's free. And then you can clone our project and run through all those shell commands, right? And uh, of course, there's the online course uh, where you can enroll and find all of these resources at one place. Now, uh, before we start off with the uh, shell commands, we start exploring them. Uh, just a few uh, quick tips uh, for the best way to learn. We suggest you go through the videos, right? And if you don't like that format, you can also go through the blog post, right? So if you're someone who likes to read, we have a very uh, exhaustive uh, blog post and also an ebook, right? So if you don't like to go through the blog post, you can also read the ebook. I'll add the link for the ebook as well. 
right and then uh, after you finish the section you please run the code either locally or on our studio cloud uh, you experiment with the code right uh, you change the options or the arguments and see how the outcome is and also go through the suggested readings right so if you want to like uh, learn uh, in more depth about these commands then we would suggest you go through the suggested readings now what to do if you get stuck with this shell commands right the first thing is try and google the error right uh, you should find a solution immediately otherwise you can search in stack overflow again someone might have posted a similar question and someone else might have answered it uh, if it is related to our studio terminal then you can ask for help on our studio community as well but if you don't want to do any of this you can always send us a mail at support at askwedacademy.com and we'll try to reply at the earliest now any question that you have please feel free to send it to us we believe that no question is naive and every question is important right so please send those questions to us and you can also use the discussion forum to post your questions as well as your suggestions all right now let us come to the agenda of the course right so first we'll understand what a shell or terminal is right now i have been uh, using the word command line so far but then now i've said shell and terminal all of these are the same right so we'll learn about that uh, we'll also look at the applications uh, that will be useful right so uh, shell or terminal can be used for everything right so whatever you do with the uh, user interface either in windows or mac you can do all of that using shell commands but we'll look at two important applications from the perspective of data science okay and we'll also learn to launch the terminal in mac windows and linux although you'll be using r studio cloud and r studio terminal for the course it is important for you to know how to launch the shell or terminal in your operating system and if you're a windows user we'll also talk a little bit about the windows subsystem for linux Coming to the shell commands that we are going to explore, uh, first we look at navigating the file system, right? So this would include moving between different directories or folders, how we can list the contents of a directory, how we can create new directories and delete existing directories. Then we'll learn about file management, right? So this will include creating new files, copying making copies of files uh, we'll also look at moving files from one directory to another and finally deleting and comparing those files uh, then we'll move on to input and output uh, we'll see how to output to the shell or redirect output to a file and we'll also look at how to sort the contents of a file how to uh, browse files using different commands from there on we'll move towards search and regular expression where we'll learn to search for strings uh, in the files present in a directory or we'll also learn to search for files and folders right so let us say you want to search all the files with a specific uh, extension so let us say we are looking for all text files in a directory right so we'll learn how to find those files uh, we'll also learn how to uh, download files from the internet right so this is another important thing that you should know how to download files from the internet uh, we'll also learn to deal with uh, compressed uh, files and folders right file compression how to uh, compress them how to decompress them uh, a bit about uh, system information right get the information about the operating system underlying operating system and then from there we'll move on to um, learning how to use the R Studio terminal, right? All the while we'll be using R Studio terminal, but here we'll learn a bit about the R Studio terminal features, how to run shell commands from R, right? So uh, while exploring the shell commands, we'll be using the R Studio terminal and we'll run those commands. But what if we want to run these shell commands from R using the R function, right? So we'll learn how to do that. We'll also run uh, shell commands in R markdown, right? 
so the associated blog post or the ebook that uh, you will be reading uh, were built using r markdown right so we will learn how to run these shell commands in r markdown and finally we will also learn how to execute r scripts from the command line right so first we learn all these uh, shell commands and then we see how to execute those shell commands from r and in the end we will also learn how to execute r functions or r scripts from the command line right and while doing all of this while doing all of this what we'll do is we'll also map these shell commands to as associated r functions right so we we'll look at the shell command and see uh, what is there a similar r function right and in the process you will end up discovering a lot of new r functions both from base r as well as from different packages and you'll also end up discovering a lot of interesting r packages themselves right so uh, you you'll discover this i mean you'll learn about this as we go through the course and we'll also learn a bit about different r package names and uh, and we'll also learn about r release names right so whenever there's a new version of r release there's a associated release name so we'll look at all those release names and also we'll work a bit around them right so that is the agenda for the course now uh, if you're going to pick up some of these sections then i would suggest uh, focusing on uh, navigating the file system uh, the file management uh, the input and output and also data transfer rest of them are optional if you have time or if you have interested you can learn them or when you come across a project where you need to use them then you can come and learn those sections as well but if you have time i would suggest that you cover all of them right so now let us move on to the first part that is what is a shell or the terminal right so shell is a text based application for viewing handling and manipulating files of course you can do a lot of other things as well but a basic definition we can say that it's a text text based application for viewing handling and manipulating files now it takes in commands right from the user and passes them on to the operating system for further processing so whatever you do with user interface the shell will take those commands in text format and then pass them on to the operating system like i said before initially i was talking about command line and then i said shell and terminal right so all of these are the same right the uh, term uh, command line is also known as terminal and shell and bash and the features might be different right so for example uh, in windows the command prompt or the powershell has different features compared to the bash right so bash is what uh, you find in linux in windows you will find command prompt and powershell and uh, uh, if you have installed git then you can also find git bash but if you want to use bash in windows then uh, you can enable something called as windows subsystem for linux so i'll come to that in a while but uh, in this course just to ensure that all of us are on the same page uh, we have created that project on our studio cloud uh, because the underlying operating system there is linux so you have access to bash so all the commands that uh, i'll be running here you'll be able to run it in our studio cloud as well right so that it ensures that all the learners have the same environment the same uh, underlying operating system and all the commands will run and give the same output right now it is sufficient to know a handful of commands to get started with the shell right like i said if you know how to navigate between directories how to handle files then it is more than enough to get started right so uh, we'll cover that in depth but we'll also look at a few other commands that you might find useful in the future now let us look at the applications from the course perspective like i said you can do anything that you want using the command line right everything that you do using the user interface that you have in windows or mac you can do the same with the command line but from the perspective of the course what we want to do is uh, 
we want to learn enough or sufficient uh, command shell command to be able to uh, use them in version control and for managing cloud services right so we have a upcoming course which is version control with git and github right so there you will end up using the shell now although our studio has a very good interface for version control uh, it does lack in some advanced features right so a lot of advanced commands that you want to run especially for version control uh, you will have to use the shell right so uh, having that knowledge will be useful and in the same way if you have interacted uh, before or if you will be interacting in the future with cloud services whether it is AWS or Google Cloud uh, where uh, you, if you're launching a, a VM instance or you're using any other uh, offerings of this then you will end up interacting with the shell or the command line right for example if you are someone who has developed a shiny app and you want to deploy it on your own shiny server then you will have to interact with the command line right so uh, so this is like the very basic that you can uh, achieve once you know the command line, right? At least be able to uh, use version control, uh, be able to interact with cloud services. You can do a lot of other stuff, right? So we are uh, given a few uh, references at the end or further readings. If you go through that, uh, you'll be able to do a lot of other stuff. There's a very good book also called um, Data Science at the Command Line, right? Which has a very um, in-depth treatment of uh, using command line for data science if you're really interested we would suggest that you can read through that book as well right but from the perspective of uh, our course uh, our intention is that you learn enough shell commands to be able to use uh, it for version control as well as for managing cloud services right now let us move on and see how we can launch the terminal in the different operating systems right so in mac you can go to applications then utilities and you should be able to launch the terminal right you'll be you'll see the terminal there icon there and then you should be able to launch the terminal uh, now in windows uh, there are multiple options right so one is you go to the start menu windows system and then uh, command prompt that is what you're seeing here this will launch command prompt and not powershell right so i'm not going to talk about that here uh, the second option is um, you can also search for uh, the command prompt right uh, in the search field right you go to start menu and search for command prompt in the uh, search field so that way also you can launch the command prompt and the third option is you hold the windows key right and press the r key to get a run window which is what you're seeing here right and then you type cmd in the box and click on the ok button and again it will launch the command prompt so there are different ways of um, launching the command prompt and uh, if you are interested in using bash on windows then we have clearly given instruction on how to uh, uh, use Windows subsystem for Linux, right? So there are few things that you have to do there. You have to uh, enable Windows subsystem for Linux, right? And then you have to uh, reboot the system, right? Once you do that, then you can go to uh, the Windows Store, that's Microsoft Store, and you can choose the uh, Linux distribution that you want to install and then you'll be able to use bash right so we are given uh, detailed steps of how to do that in the uh, learning management system as well as in the blog posts so uh, if you are really interested you can try it right and you'll be able to use uh, uh, bash on your windows system that's what in fact uh, we are doing as well right so i have a windows operating system but uh, since i have installed windows subsystem for linux i'm able to use bash here Right. So if you're interested, you can do that. And if you have any questions or if you face any issues, uh, please feel free to uh, write to us. Right. And in Linux, you can uh, go to applications, accessories, and then terminal. 
or you can go to application system and terminal right so uh, if you want to try out these uh, commands on your own system then uh, you can launch the terminal uh, depending on what operating system you have and you can start using them right and when you do that i would suggest that you go to uh, the github repository here or from the learning management system and you download this particular folder right you download this repository right you can do that here click on this button here clone or download and you can download a, a zip folder right and then you can extract all the files and folders into that particular directory where uh, you want to explore the commands and start going through the uh, course section by section right now let me come back here and we'll talk about our studio terminal right so R studio uh, if you're using the latest version of R studio then you should be able to uh, use the R studio terminal right uh, the terminal was introduced in version 1.1.383 right and it is next to the console tab right so let me go here this is our console tab right here you can see the terminal right and there are two ways to uh, launch the terminal one is uh, press on shift alt and t right and that's alt shift t or you can go to tools here and then you can come to terminal and click on new terminal right now uh, depending on your operating system if you are on linux it will end up using bash if you're on windows it will end up using command prompt right uh, so i'll show you what happens how that is done if you go to global options here go to tools and go to global options right so you click on terminal here right and here you can select uh, what is used by our studio terminal right so the options are git bash because i have installed git um, command prompt windows powershell and because i have enabled windows subsystem for linux uh, it can also use bash right so i have set it to bash because we need it for the course right so click on apply and okay right so um, we have added links to the R Studio blog post and webinar uh, where they talk more about the R Studio terminal. For our purpose, uh, you can see here that you can launch multiple terminals here, right? Terminal 1, Terminal 2. You can rename your terminal, right? And uh, you can also move to the next terminal, right? You can move back and forth between the different terminals that you have. And so if you are more interested in learning the features of our studio terminal i would suggest that you go through the uh, webinar link that we have provided right uh, this is the same terminal that you'll also see on our studio cloud right you can see the terminal here right? it's the same that we have and we also have the same uh, uh, features in bash because i have uh, enabled windows subsystem for linux so whatever i'll be doing here whatever i'll execute here whatever uh, our result or output you'll see here you'll, you'll be able to see it here in the uh, studio cloud project as well right so now i'll move on and we'll look a bit at prompt when you launch the terminal right so this is what you'll see here right and in the same way you have it here let me extend this all the way to end you can also see a studio user then application cloud project and there's a dollar symbol here right so that is the prompt right whatever command you enter it will come after this and once your command has been executed has been run you will again see that in the terminal now in uh, mac and linux it is the dollar symbol and in windows it is slightly different right now uh, you can also see 
something else here which is basically the username followed by an at then there is the host name followed by the working directory that is the directory in which the commands will be executed and finally you see the prompt right so similarly if i go to our studio cloud you can see our studio user which is the username and then you have a lengthy string application deployment that is the host name and then you can see the uh, present working directory or the current direct, uh, working directory which is cloud slash project right followed by the prompt right so you'll see this in any uh, bash terminal that you have open okay and you should know which one is the prompt which one is the username host name and the uh, current or present working directory right i'll come to the detail of the present working directory when we come to the navigating file system section but for the time being you should know what prompt is right and then we'll run some uh, uh, commands initially to get started right so the first we'll look at four commands here which is who am i that is who is the user who is running the command I will get the date from the system. Uh, the date command can be used for setting the date and time as well. Uh, the cal command for displaying calendar and finally clear for clearing the screen. Right now on the right side you can also see the uh, R functions which have similar functionality. Right so for example sys.info will also give you the user information or you can install the who am i package and use the who am i function uh, for date and time we have sys.date and sys.time and for clearing the screen we use control plus l right so let us go ahead and explore uh, these commands one by one right so let us start with who am I right so that is giving me the username now let me go to our studio cloud and run the same command right so here the username is our studio user right so let's come back and then we'll run the next command which is date right so it displays the day the month uh, the date followed by the time and the time zone and year right now if i run cal it should display the calendar with the uh, day date being highlighted so today is 17 so you can see that date is highlighted now finally if i want to clear the screen then i can use the clear command right now you can also use control l instead of clear right so if you press on control l it will clear the screen as well similar to the r console right so we looked at some basic commands right now right and what we'll do next is we'll learn how to read the documentation of these commands or different commands so that uh, when we want to use the new command we can learn about it we can also look at the additional options that can be passed on with that particular command right so i'll look at two commands here which is man and what is so man will show you the entire documentation of a command right so uh, in the uh, navigating file system section the first command that we look at will be twd which is present working directory so let us look at the documentation of that particular command right so here you can see it right so this name synopsis description author and other information so you can uh, press on space to keep reading further and you can press on Q to quit this documentation right so once I press on Q it is closed now if you don't want to look at the entire documentation of a command but you just want to see a uh, single line description then you can use what is followed by the command name and so here it gives a single line description of what this command does right it prints the name of the current working directory 
right? So you can use either of this. If you just want to know the uh, description of a command, use what is. But if you want to read through the uh, documentation, you want to know how it can be used, what are the additional options that you can uh, pass along with that command, you can use man, right? So now that brings us to the end of the first section, right? And now we'll move on to the next section, which is navigating file system.